Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Tips and Tricks. On today's show, we're going to show you how to get started with Zoom with two amazing students from Winona State University. That's next on Tips and Tricks. Collider Tips and Tricks, sponsored by Collider Sustaining Sponsors. Thank you for your support of the Rochester entrepreneurial ecosystem and donors like you. So welcome everybody to Tips and Tricks, your guide to staying productive and sane at home. My name is Jamie Sunsbach. Uh, you know, moving our world and our work online has really been a challenge faced by millions of Americans. For high tech entrepreneurs, this is probably most likely presented less of a challenge, but for many other entrepreneurs, adapting to what I call faces in boxes has been very difficult. Uh, one tool that has emerged that uh, I think has been helpful has been Zoom, which is an online meeting and webinar platform that is gaining millions of users during this pandemic. But what is this tool and, and how do you get started? So with me today are two students from Winona State University, Rebecca and Mikawai. Welcome. So uh, let's pretend for a second that I'm brand new to Zoom. I just set it up. You know, what are some tips that will get me using Zoom quickly and safely? All right, thank you very much. Um, I just wanna start by saying we're very happy to be here today to share some tips. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We actually have a bit of a presentation. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna start off by um, saying that we are just gonna talk about five basic Zoom tips that can help with productivity. Um, the first tip we're gonna talk about today is the Zoom desktop application. Um, if you want to go ahead and download the Zoom desktop application, all you have to do is go to the Zoom website, go to resources, and click download Zoom client. This is what the Zoom client looks like. As you can see from the home page, it's very easy to go ahead and schedule a meeting or join a meeting. This is what the chat tab looks like. If you joined Zoom with an organization, you're gonna be able to find your company contacts um, in the chat and you'll be able to communicate with them through here. This is the meetings tab. As you can see, you have a meeting here under upcoming. This is what it looks like when you have linked your desktop Zoom client to an Outlook calendar. Miko is going to talk a little bit more about how you can sync Outlook and the desktop client later. And this is what your contacts page looks like. As you can see, you have company contacts here. Um, and this is if you joined Zoom with an organization, you'll find those company contacts or any other contacts you have here uh, in this application. Another tip we have is we recommend using the iPhone or smartphone app for Zoom. It's really helpful if you want to check for a meeting or um, look, check the chat or schedule a meeting. You can easily do that from your phone. All right, and now I'm gonna pass it on to Miko and he's gonna talk about how you can sync your calendar to the desktop client. Thank you, first of all, for having us, Jamie. And um, I would like to share another tip that is syncing your calendar. And I find it very useful, especially to first time uh, Zoom users. And um, Rebecca just went over the desktop application and how you can see those meetings showing up and ensuring that your calendar is synced. It can be Outlook or Google Calendar. You will stay up to date um, with your upcoming meetings and um, that will for sure help you uh, with scheduling and getting notifications also when you're using a phone application that you have a meeting upcoming. So the way you do it, you would have to actually enable that and connect your calendar in the settings on your account uh, in, the, in the browser. So you would go to your profile section, then you would uh, go to calendar over here settings and you would join it. So let's zoom into that. And over here, I selected Outlook. You can select Google instead and make sure that these options are enabled. And this will allow you to have it synced. Um, just remember there are many options um, that you can be playing around, staying 
productive and uh, using Zoom features and add-ons to help you stay productive, but just make sure to uh, start simple because you might easily get overwhelmed with everything that Zoom is um, offering. So uh, start small, start simple. Another tip um, that I have for basic, uh, for first time um, Zoom users is uh, mic, speakers, and video. So let me first tell you that um, you always want to use earbuds. Um, that, will, that will be for the sake of uh, yourself and also for the sake of others because you do not want to have any echo or uh, interrupting, disrupting the meeting um, when somebody's presenting. So make sure you always use your earbuds. And now let me quickly show you what mic speakers and video features look like on the toolbar. So over here, um, I started a meeting, but I still haven't joined audio. So you would, before joining, I recommend really to test your speaker and microphone to ensure that it's working. And Zoom has a nice feature that it will uh, guide you through it, through testing microphone and um, your speakers. And once everything's working, you would hit uh, join with computer audio. And there are many options as well, how you can join but right now I will just tell you that it is best to automatically select join audio by computer when joining a meeting and that will take care of it once you're joining the meeting by itself so you don't have to go through this process. And um, here after I joined you can see that you can select your external microphone which I did um, so it's up and working. Another tip very useful uh, for a microphone um, stay muted when you're not speaking. That will ensure a great quality um, of the meeting, of the presentation, um, and also make sure that you're not disrupting um, other participants by actually staying muted. And then you will, when you want to talk or you're asked a question, unmute yourself and then speak. Um, now moving on to video, uh, when you're going to meet face-to-face, -face, um, uh, having conferences, professional meetings, you're ensuring that you look professional. But you, when using Zoom, you also have to think about your background. Your background also needs to look professional. So please ensure that there is no disruptions. Um, there is no lights facing your camera or windows. Behind me, there is some lighting on the TV and that is not a very good example, but... Um, <laughs> Make sure that, please, um, your background is somewhat solid. And this option over here, enabled, will always uh, allow you to be asked when you're trying to join a meeting to uh, whether join with video or without. And that is a great option because sometimes uh, when you're joining a meeting, you do not have to show yourself and um, you might have a messy background and you might join and then all participants will see you for a little bit until you actually turn off your camera. So that will allow you to always select which one you're joining with or without a video before you come into the meeting. A very useful feature. And the last thing about the video is the feature I love the most. It is the virtual background. Um, sometimes when I do not have time to get set up appropriately with my background, I enable it. So it cuts pretty well the image of um, whatever background you might have here. Do not get overwhelmed again. These are the default pictures you can add on your own. You can even add a video, but just remember to um, make it simple uh, using Zoom first. And in my case, I have it set up that I do not have a green screen because I do not. Um, and it is cutting uh, it is cutting me out pretty well into the background. And tip number four, uh, screen sharing. Please take advantage of that. Um, that can easily assist you in conveying your message using visuals uh, in a clear, in a clear way, very clear way when you're sharing it. And over here even um, when you're starting out using Zoom, what I strongly encourage is using dual monitors, um, if available, of course. Here, there, uh, here is an example of how I'm using dual monitors and trying to share my screen. 
And the screen to the right is the screen of my laptop, actually, number one. And screen to the left, uh, to the left number two, is this uh, additional monitor. And what I would try to share is always I would try to share uh, screen number two. I would treat it in a sense that screen number two is my public screen that participants would see. And screen number one is my public screen that, for example, I have sensitive information. I would not want participants to see, but I need to have access to it uh, to reference, um, to reference the, that information during the meeting when presenting. And so I would make sure that I'm selecting desktop uh, to screen number two. And there is also an option to share uh, your own audio. Do not do it. I do not encourage it because of uh, audio being delayed and affect it, it would be affecting your bandwidth and internet speed. So I would not suggest doing this. And then you hit share and um, also notice that you have this blue uh, border surrounding the screen. That is notifying you after selecting this here that you are about to make this screen uh, what I called public. And once you're sharing it, you have a green border around it um, for Macs and I think it's a blue border for PCs and this is what it looks like. And whatever uh, you want to share, you just drag over this uh, screen. Uh, it's easier to share uh, screens as a whole, desktops as a whole, instead of particular uh, presentations, because especially when you're using dual monitors, you can just be dragging things you want to share into that public screen. And whenever you're having a bad connection, you can always go to settings in your Zoom desktop client application and uh, in the settings under statistics tab uh, over here, you have uh, basically showing you uh, how Zoom is affecting your bandwidth and internet when it's maxing up, um, it's not good, then try turning off your camera maybe and it will uh, ensure that you stay in the meeting and do not get disconnected. And for our last tip number five, that, um, I am giving it off to Rebecca. She will mention that. All right, so I am now gonna talk about our fifth and final tip. Um, we're gonna talk about the chat window. So this is what the chat window looks like. Um, as you can see here, um, it says to everyone. So this means that you'll be sending a chat to the whole group the whole everyone in the meeting. Um, but what you can do is click on the drop down here and you can specify if you'd like to send it to a particular participant in the meeting. Um, and then also we have over here the file icon in the chat window. Um, this icon will allow you to share a file with the whole group. If for some reason you don't want this enabled, a host can also change that in the settings. If they go to settings, meeting basic, they can disable file transfer. If for some reason you do not want that capability in the meeting. Um, and then you can also click the three little dots here on the right and it'll open up this window here. This is a nice, um, Merge to meeting window is a nice feature because as you can see, this chat window kind of popped up in the middle of the screen and it's a bit dist distracting. So if you click merge to meeting window, it is going to merge the Zoom group chat window to the right hand side of the screen where it's out of the way and less distracting than when it's sitting in front of the people who are talking. So I would recommend using that setting and just putting it off to the right hand side. All right, and those are our five basic Zoom tips. Great job, and thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. My thanks to Rebecca and Mika Wai for joining us today. Just a reminder that we do this show twice a week right here at Collider.mn. If you're getting value from this show, please visit Collider.mn and see how you can help support the work we do to create a vibrant and healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem right here in Rochester, Minnesota. We'll see you next time.